Welcome to the third in our SP3 video series. In the first video we did the basic configuration, talked about the board and put the firmware on it. In the second video we then installed it into a craft, set up the motors and ESCs, did the final calibration and setup and then took it for a test flight. In this video we're going to talk about flight modes because you'll have seen them in the previous two videos but if you're not familiar with clean flight some of it might look a little bit confusing. Now the way this works is that there are various flight modes available to you so that you can select and you can even decide which channel actually selects the modes and there are lots of different options and it can appear quite confusing. So what I'm going to try to do in this video is go through each of the modes in turn and give you the best view that I possibly can. The information on modes is changing all the time and as I'm recording this in late July we're on about 1.9 uh, version of clean flight. 1.10 is on its way and things will change. So if you're looking at this after the end of July 2015, you just need to go and have a look at the Clean Flight Wiki to find out the latest and greatest detail. So before we get into the nitty gritty on each of the modes, it's useful to explain how the modes work by grouping them like we have on the screen. The first lot of modes is what I would call primary flight modes, and these are the ones that the craft has to be in one of these in order to fly. So angle and horizon are kind of self-level modes and rate or acro mode is the mode it's in if you haven't selected angle or horizon. So it's always got to be in one of those three modes because if you don't have angle or horizon, you're in rate. Secondary flight modes are the kind of modes that are there that do something that you typically turn on alongside one of the primary flight modes. So it might be using the barometer to maintain height, the magnetometer to maintain a heading or some of the others and we'll look at those as well. The GPS modes are two modes that you have to be very careful of, they're changing all the time. GPS hold is kind of working, GPS home I would use with extreme caution. The multi-wee technology that a lot of the code came from in the very early days of clean flight had a wonderful GPS implementation that was pretty solid. However, at the moment the 32-bit version of the code is uh, coming along to try and give us that same functionality back and although I'm sure we'll get there. I would always say be very careful when you're using GPS. And then finally, we'll look at some other modes as well, just to kind of complete the list. But again, be aware that this is version 1.9 of Clean Flight and things are changing all the time. So we'll start at the top and we'll go through each of these in turn. So as I said, rate or acro is the mode that you're in if you don't set any modes up at all. So if you completely skip the step of setting up Clean Flight on the SP3 and don't select anything, this is the mode you get by default. It's the one that doesn't give yourself level, it's very basic stabilization on the board and it's great for experienced pilots and for doing tricks and flips and rolls etc. The next mode that we'll talk about is arm. Obviously you can use this to arm the board so you can assign a switch on your transmitter that when you flick it and it turns this mode on you're arming the board ready for flight. Typically I tend to use the sticks to arm the uh, the board just because it's the same with the APM, Pixhawk, Multiwees, CC3Ds. Everybody seems to use the same convention where the throttle at its lowest position over to the right hand side arms the board, throttle at the lowest position over at the left hand side for the rudder disarms the board and I've got used to that. Some people really like the arm function. Be careful when you're setting this up and you need to make sure that you are setting it up and it, you're testing it and it's working properly. Next one then is angle. This is your classic self-level mode. So it's now starting to become a little bit obsolete and replaced by horizon. I would say angle is a fantastic mode to start learning to fly. And when you're just testing the model, it's great to put it in angle mode because it limits the amount of damage you can do when you're setting it up. Very good for FPV. I like angle mode, it just means that even if I get a bit carried away as I'm flying around and push the stick too far over, it will only go over as far as the software will let it, it won't allow me to flip it. Horizon mode is the last of the primary flight modes and this is kind of advanced auto level where towards the center of the stick you get a auto level angle style response but if you go right to the edge of the aileron or elevator 
then you're actually starting to go into rate mode and it will still allow you to do things like flips and rolls. So this is a nice one for those more experienced pilots that want the safety of a self-level but still want to be able to go mad and do some tricks. Barometer is the mode that you can turn on alongside one of the other modes. So this kind of goes on as well as either having it in rate, angle or horizon. And it's used to maintain altitude. The little barometer at the bottom of the board that we set up that's covered by the piece of foam is constantly reading the air pressure. And as the craft rises in the air, the air pressure falls and that is what it's using to maintain its height. The barometer works really well and, you know, I wouldn't expect it to maintain it kind of centimetre perfect, but within four to six feet, I would say it's pretty good at doing that. Nice to have when you're flying around and using FPV. Be aware, though, that with the barometer turned on, it changes the way the throttle works. So rather than the throttle being directly linked to how much thrust is put out, the way it works is that the middle range of the throttle is just telling the board that you want to maintain the height it's at. If it goes to the top third of the throttle range, you're telling the board you want it to rise. If it goes below that middle third range on the throttle, you're telling the board you want it to sink. I've had a couple of subscribers that complain that the throttle response is really mushy, and it's typically because they've got barometer turned on. Magnetometer is similar to barometer in terms of it's a mode that kind of augments one of the other basic modes and it gives you headlock. So rather than just rely on the accelerometers and gyroscopes to sense when the craft is rotating in a way that you're not wanting it to, it also uses the magnetometer or the compass to maintain the heading. So the heading that it's at when you have the rudder in the middle position is the one that even if the model tries to rotate through wind or whatever then it will always pull the model back so that it is rotating and pointing in that same heading. The magnetometer can get interference from the power lines so if the board is too close to the PCB power distribution or too close to the wires that are carrying the current to and from the speed controllers as you power up the boards you'll see the magnetometer deflect that's not great so in those cases you need to physically separate the board from the power system or use something like Mu Metal M -U -M -E -T -A -L, in between the board and the power system to help in reduce the interference that you're getting it. Next two modes I'm not massive fans of, I think these are a bit cheaty. These are ones that you, where it uses the magnetometer and its orientation when you first start flying so that even when you turn the craft around it always behaves as though its back is pointing towards you. So normally as you fly a quadcopter or a multirotor you have to account for the fact that it's in different orientations. So this um, the classic one is learning to hover nose in which for everybody uh, that I've ever known has been a nightmare. This allows you to get over that so even when the craft is pointing towards you if you push the elevator to the top it will actually then fly away from you whereas classically it would fly towards you so it's always taking into account the orientation and the commands that you're giving it um, making the craft behave as though it was sat tail in head adjust it's just used with uh, head free it resets the origin for the yaw so you can change it how it works GPS home. Now we've talked about this. This is one that you would use with one of the other modes. GPS home I typically use with angle and barometer so that the whole thing flies back um, self level so it's controlling itself and it's also trying to maintain the height that I've put it at as well. Again GPS home right now isn't particularly great. Um, it's one that I know that the developer of Clean Flight is working on. So keep your eyes and ears open for this but right now as of 1.9 if you're going to use GPS home be very very careful and although GPS home is the mode that I always set up on my OD switch on the radio I wouldn't trust clean flight right now to be able to bring it back to me every time but fingers crossed that'll change in the very near future when it does I'll put the video up uh, for the GPS for SP3 and we can see it in action. So GPS hold uses the GPS coordinates that it's at when you flick it into GPS hold mode and it then just tries to maintain that position in the sky. Be aware, GPS home and GPS hold rely on the magnetometer being absolutely rock solid. So if your magnetometer is getting any kind of interference at all, these two modes, even when they're perfect in the code, will not work very well. And the classic one with GPS hold is if your craft is doing what's called toilet bowling, where it's kind of 
going around in big circles, that's typically because the magnetometer is not calibrated or it's getting interference. Beeper, great little mode this, I'd always set this up. This allows the beeper that you've got plugged into the board to shriek and make a noise. It's essentially turning it into a lost model alarm. I would always recommend with smaller quads that you have a lost model alarm. They always seem to land in long grass or on the edge of the field in, uh, in trees or brush. And without a lost model alarm, you are leaving it to chance that you'll come across the model. Sonar, we've done other videos and we will do a video on sonar with the SP3 board later in the series. You can attach a sonar little device underneath the craft. They're very cheap and cheerful, three or four dollars, and you can plug that into the board. Only works up to about six to ten feet maximum height and only on particularly uh, reflective audio surfaces. So things like concrete and stuff work really well. And it uses the sonar to maintain the height. Be aware that once the sonar is plugged in um, and activated, you typically find the sonar is always being used just to maintain the height and position, um, even when you haven't got the sonar mode turned on. If you want to see more about the sonar while we're still building this series, there is a sonar video for the Nazi 32 and Clean Flight, and but we'll be remaking it for the SP3 later in the year. Then we have the LED modes. There's actually three LED modes at the moment on the board, LED max, LED low, and landing lights. These are settable so that you can change how the LEDs behave. The fifth video in this series is actually telling you uh, how you can install the LEDs onto the craft and use individually addressable LEDs. So the LEDs actually change color based on what's going on with clean flight, the controller, and the SP3. Last couple then, we've got one which is telemetry. That turns telemetry on and off. Telemetry on the SP3, as with all clean flight boards, is fantastic. The nice thing about the SP3 is it does allow us to use smart port telemetry up to things like the X4R receiver we're using in this series without any additional boards or shenanigans. And then finally, the last one is auto-tune. Now, auto-tune is the one you can use to actually change the way the PIDs are set and uh, the idea is is that you take the board off you fly it and the board flips the model left and right and is listening and sensing how the movement works changing the PIDs and retesting them just be careful with auto tune i've heard of instances where auto tune unfortunately has got the craft into a slightly unstable state and the craft has unfortunately crashed so i would always recommend if you're using auto tune make sure that you're ready to flick out of it if you don't like the looks of things and make sure you've got plenty of height and plenty of space because as the model flicks around it can cover quite a bit of ground there are other modes as well that I'm not going to cover in as much detail, but there's camera stabilization and camera trigger. Those are obviously used with a gimbal to control how the gimbal responds. There's one called pass through, which is where you can pass the control input straight through the board out to the other side to the servos that are controlling the control surfaces. Very handy if you have a plane, so you can just fly it as though there's no flight controller there at all. And then you can turn off pass through and they let the board take over. And finally, there's a mode called Gov. Can't find a lot about Gov right now. I'm sure as clean flight documentation is updated, that one will change. And again, always worthwhile keeping an eye on the clean flight wikis as things are changing all the time. So hopefully that whistle stop tour will give you a good idea of how you need to set things up. I would say that you need to pick one of the primary flight modes and then have a go at turning on the other pieces one by one and seeing how that behaves. Again, just a word of warning, be careful with the GPS modes right now. They are getting better all the time, but I wouldn't use the GPS modes on a day-to-day -day basis. I would have it there as an oh dear for the GPS home, and even then, I wouldn't guarantee that it was going to bring the craft back to you every time. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.